So we have enough fossil fuel to, to keep us going well into the future. The problem is that using those fossil fuels is disrupting our climate in ways that are gonna be catastrophic for us and for every other species on Earth. There's also all sorts of pollutants that come when you burn things like coal, heavy metals, and particulate matter, and all kinds of other things that many of which end up in our water and in some cases end up in our food. So it takes a lot of energy to take dirty water and to make it clean. We don't want to be taking that energy from sources that damage the environment like fossil fuels. We want to be taking it from low carbon, low polluting sources like renewables. There is more than enough potential solar energy to power the entire planet. That's not to say we should get all of our energy from solar, but clearly it needs to be one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle. There are short, medium, and long-term challenges to getting more solar energy out there. In the short term, we need to continue to drive costs down. In the medium term, we're gonna to need to integrate energy storage technologies with renewable energy technologies on a larger scale. And in the long term, we're really gonna need new types of solar panel technologies that make less energy to make so we can make enough of them fast enough. It's not just about developing the new technologies, we need them to get out there into the market. And to do that, we need intelligent policy. So I really view it as one of the roles that we share as scientists to communicate to policymakers what the needs are and what technologies are available to solve them. So one of the great things about working at a national laboratory is not only can we do the basic science using the world-class facilities and the staff expertise we have, but we can also take it to the next level by doing process engineering and really looking at how you can scale up the materials and the fabrication. Thank you.